Dun, dun. Hey, Facebook, we are live here on a Monday night. Get ready to answer your listener questions. I'm trying to find the listener questions that I had up. Here it is. Nope, that's not the one. I teased it in the ad. Now I got to find it again because I clicked away. It was from Mickey. There it is. Okay, good. I want to make sure what? we oh. do most advertising. Got it. All right, so which ones are we, what are we going to do? We'll figure out Friday after the show. So just Okay. No, no, I want to think about uh, it while we're doing this show. <laughs> is that how we do it? Okay, so pick one. I don't care. What, what do well, you think? I'm not on the street. I'm not on the page yet. So, oh, Pam's Pam's slacking. No, I'm just what? So everybody, tune in on Facebook. Say hello. Tell us where you're from and how hot it is. The heat index is 104 outside right here in St. Louis, and I have and on- how hot it is. No cold in this basement. How hot it is. Hot. So hot. No. no. Stop it. All right, let's so see. Okay. I know that one was super popular. That like got a lot of likes. It was the one about. We're finding the Friday topic from our Facebook page. You guys had great ideas. We're going to. You guys did. Like a month or two. It was. Hey, Patrick. The best thing I ever ate. Disney yeah, that was it. No, oh, I can't do that one at dinner time. I'm so. Oh my goodness. Well, we only record at dinner time, so right? we're kind of out of luck. Right, exactly. it's, uh, we're looking at the map here in uh, Boston. It's uh, 95 with a heat index of 129, and uh, Patrick's checking in in Connecticut, 89 with a heat index of 92. <sighs> oh, Evansville's got me beat. James says it's 94 with a heat index of 106 in Central Indiana. In we'll my be- house, it's a balmy 65. It is, it is indoors 50, it is 60.1 where i'm recording right now it is so cold down here <laughs> why because it, that air conditioner is super efficient in the basement but not upstairs so like we it's like 72 upstairs but i, I have on my jacket i'm good my, my toes are so cold though because i don't have my shoes i shouldn't have said i that. just like I, guess I like our house to be cold especially at night oh at night man we make it like a great- <laughs> i want to be able to use my comforter year round <laughs> yeah, that's what you do it so cold. <laughs> So, and I know other people feel this way. So. Oh, yeah. Like, I have to debate getting up to go to the bathroom. If I have to go to the bathroom, I'm like, dude, it's so cold. I want to get up. Oh, it's 75 <laughs> in uh, Minnesota. That's where we need to be. <laughs> 91 in Dallas. We're way hotter than Dallas. Something's wrong with that picture. Okay. <laughs> answer listener questions. So, we're going to talk about the best thing we did. That one with the like, best thing I ever ate. Is it the snack? The one that was like this? One at each a, a snack, a counter, and a table. Okay. That sounds good. I like that. And wasn't it signature too or something? Was yep. it snack counter and signature? Yep. yep. Snack counter, table, and signature. That's how we're we'll doing it. And how about a drink? We'll throw in a drink. Yeah. Now, okay. Oh. We'll talk about this on the podcast here because it just came out a few minutes ago about the buses. No, because all we're going to do is change the time. Okay. Go on the TVs. <clears throat> yeah. I already wrote the article. Drawing plans. <laughs> well, so you're fine. Seven minutes, nine minutes, 11 minutes. 25. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. watch as watch as your time goes up. Yeah. Exactly. Like they just jerk your chain with that thing. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you think it's coming. Okay, here we go. Uh, what is this? One, three, four, four. Okay. Tomorrow. Your yep. bus is coming right. tomorrow. Yeah, your bus is coming tomorrow. <laughs> Hang tight. Welcome to episode 1344 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Less Travel, who's probably got a little uh, pain in his fingers, but hey, that's what we do. We work hard. We I did my finger push-ups last week, so I am ready. 2019's here. Good times down at Walt Disney World. I think some things might be happening. Now, Walt Disney World in 2019, so you might want to be there. So I'm just saying. Maybe. Cool maybe. Maybe. We are here to answer your listener questions. We love the questions you send in. We answer them live here on Facebook as well every Monday around 5.30 Eastern. As Ricky says, around 5.45 by the time we get done, Gavin. And uh, have a good time. So uh, thanks for tuning in. We're going to be uh, taking on those listener questions here. So joining me from a Disney World After All.com, touringplans.com, and the Mouse for Less, we have Ricky. What's going on, Ricky? Uh, you know, nothing. I hear tell there's a star something opening up next year. I I don't know if anybody else is interested in that, but you know, just just throwing that out there. Star star something in Hollywood Studios, I think. Yeah, it's a rumor. <laughs> it might not happen. It's a- <laughs> just a rumor. <laughs> I'm just saying. Now you might want to stay tuned because uh, there there might be some legs to that one. Might be. 
Could be. Could be. All right. Also <laughs> joining us, we have the co-owner of the Magic for Less Travel. And speaking of a certain land coming to a certain park, you will be in a certain land in a certain park very, very soon, correct? Very soon. And you will too. So I hate you both. I hate you both so much. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> really looking forward to it. So it's funny. Um, as we got closer to this Toy Story Land opening, I, you know, was so glad I had a trip planned for right then, you know, when it was going to open. But like, how can you Disney fans not have a trip planned this summer? Like, aren't you going crazy? Like, I don't know. I mean, like, it's something about I, I love hearing the reports from other people and hearing all that. But how can you not want to be there, even if it is going to be crazy? And that will be me for Star Wars. 100%. I will want to be there knowing full well it will be crazy yes you I mean, we do epcot on new year's eve we do epcot on the fourth of right. july it, oh it'll be more nuts than that trust me <laughs> but that's a good primer that gets you set. i know right i'm building a base yeah if you want if you want to have a base for what star wars land will be like when it opens go uh on new year's eve that'll be a good <laughs> yeah. just get cool. you in the, in the right mindset of you know survival of the fittest it is yes I know, but this year maybe no nothing on New Year's Eve because the marathon's way after New Year's Eve. Oh, so I probably won't be down there this year for New Year's. Dang it! Yeah, oh, well. neither. What you, can you do? Okay, so real quick, we had an update right before we started recording the show about um, they're adding the bus times, the bus wait times for the resort buses to the My Disney Experience app. Ricky, on a scale of one to ten, how excited were you when you read this news? Well, it was a 10 until I found out that you have to have a resort, uh, uh, like a, a reservation. So it's gone down to like a 8.5. So because, <laughs> you know, I stay outside a lot. So obviously I wouldn't have a reservation. So I don't get to see the times on my phone. I have to actually still trek to the bus stop. So boo for me. <laughs> Well, it's like the TV won't still be there, I doubt, you know. Sure. Right. The TV will definitely still be there to let us know. You know that those things yes. are deadly accurate, too. You know, they, yes. never, they never go from, like, your bus will be here in three minutes. You're like, yes, yes. And then all of a sudden it goes to five. And then it's like yes. 12. And you're like, what? What? Did it, what? Did it Why is my bus changing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they, um, yeah, I know. And I was like a one until my husband told me <laughs> when I fly down for the Toy Story event, I do not have a car rented, so I will be taking Disney <laughs> transportation. There you go. Like there the, you go. I was like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> nice. All right. So we got the first question today from Stacy. It's a simple one. She says, what would you choose? The Halloween party on opening day in August or a water park? And other bikes worth renting at the boardwalk. Thanks so much, Stacy. Doesn't say where she's from. All right. So first of all, let me talk about the boardwalk bikes. They are a lot of fun, but they are heavy. Uh, if you've never ridden the bikes at the boardwalk or any of the places, those Surrey bikes, they are heavy. So they do take a lot of work to ride, you know, to push. So you got to be in a decent shape to get that done. Um, also, when it's hot, you probably want to do it at night, you know, around the boardwalk. Nighttime is a good time to rent a bike. So that's why I'd say they're fun, but they're not as easy. I mean, if you really look at the people that are riding those things, watch their faces. They're working, man. It's like driving a Volkswagen without a motor. That's that's what I've I I've heard very, very many family arguments yeah. happening as people were riding the bikes. In fact, one of our favorite stories, and we laugh about it almost every time we see those bikes, is we heard a mom say to her child she was going to smack his face off <laughs> if she, he did not start pedaling. And I was like, wow. Oh, my goodness. That dark real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it was hot and she was oh. sick of pedaling. Yeah. As I always say, he brings out the best and the rest of us. And uh, that's true. That's good stuff. They bring out the best. So, yeah, that's it. it. All right. So, Ricky, the question was Halloween party, the very first party in August or water park? Because it's hot. What do you think? It is hot. Oh, man. Um, it's too bad you can't do both. Uh, no, uh, I know that they really only want to choose one. So I think I would, gosh, it's tough. I think I would probably say Halloween party just because it's so unique. And, you know, there's the opportunity that you could go to the water park throughout the year if you're going down a different, you know, uh, another year or something like that. So I would say Halloween party. All right, Pam, what do you say? Real quick, this way, three of us, we can kind of uh, have two out of one. We, we're, you know, two, one or three, oh, and kind of make a decision. <laughs> um, golly, that is so tough. It is. Um, because the water parks are so much. They fun. are. 
I mean, they really are. And it's something that most people don't do. And the, and the little known thing is, although some people know this, once you have purchased the park hopper option, it is not much more to, to add that water park option on. So it's actually not going to be that expensive to do. Um, because it's just, a, you know, a relatively inexpensive add-on. So I'm going to go ahead and say, ready? I'm going to say wow. the water parks. Okay. Although I love the party, I think that the water parks, because you get that, you get as many options as the number of days of tickets that you have. That's so true. if you have a six-day ticket, you get six water park options, which is awesome. If so, you buy that, yeah. The, yeah the if, you buy that, if you buy that option, yeah. Yeah. I'm going water park too, just because it's August and it's so, so hot. And it's it, August isn't even close to Halloween. Come on now. Like that's I know true. the party's fun. The party is fun, but I mean, that's like uh, doing Christmas in September. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> Some people like to do Christmas in September. Uh, no, right? no, it is fun though. The party's fun. You really can't have a bad decision. Okay. Real quick. Cause somebody's asking which of the water parks is a favorite. Stacy's asking here in the chat, river country, Typhoon Lagoon, or Blizzard Beach. So probably not river country. No, she said that was the last time she went to a water park. Was it river country? So wow. I like Typhoon. Pam, what about you? I like Typhoon too. Um, I just like the overall theme of it. And I like those little mini donuts. <laughs> Is that a good reason to go? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like going to the water park and getting little mini donuts. Yes. Well, I mean, it, while you're in honest, I'm being honest. <laughs> I like the lazy river there. I just really like the theming and it just feels bigger to me. Um, there's a lot of space and all of that. So, yeah, I mean, I've had my wedgie at, at, uh, on summit plummet and I think those days have uh, flown by, you know, like I, I don't, <laughs> I might do one, one more stupid at the time, but it's, it's not that really it's <laughs> like it's I, it's not fun really why i mean you go like 100 miles an hour and get like the worst wedgie it's, eyes water plus you're terrified leaning <laughs> up to it. is this how i want to spend my life terrified exactly all right ricky so we got two uh two typhoons i know you're a blizzard right i am a blizzard <laughs> yeah 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 I, you know what though i need to go back i haven't been to the water parks in years and um you know, with all the changes that they've made, well, some of the changes that they made at uh, Typhoon, uh, I, you know, but I should probably give it another try. Crush I them. want the sharks yeah. to come back, though. Well, I'm sorry. No sharks. I did do the shark swimming, though. That was yeah. the coldest water. I loved it, though. It was oh, so God. fun. Oh, that water was colder than this basement. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was for thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, cold. All right. Good stuff. All right. Let's get to one in the chat here. Anthony says, today was Magic Band Day. We added a room only to the front of our trip so we could go a day earlier. We all do that. <laughs> that's, that's a disease. Disney math. Exactly. Uh, we got two sets of Magic Bands. All the Magic Bands for our package. Or will the magic bands for our package be active for the day we arrive? Or will we need to switch our bands uh, for each frame of the vacation? So real quick, the magic bands will work. Any of them will work for anything. They just pull from your account. I I shouldn't say this, but I told you I have now for the, for our, our trip that we're going on now, I have five separate reservations because I had to fill in like one night, at, you know, Coronado before our package. So guess how many magic bands are going to be showing up at this house in the next week? <laughs> I hadn't customized any of them. Yeah, I could make a read. Okay, so let's get to the next one here. From the, We're going back and forth to the inbox. Jen says, be our guest podcast team. I'm helping a friend with a short notice trip, and he's not a Disney fan whatsoever, but he wants to give his boys the experience. I like that. He's a single dad of six-year-old twins who are 47 inches tall, everything but Aerosmith and Primeval World. Dad is six foot three and thin. Okay, I'm six foot three, so I get dad's a pretty good height. Uh, are there any rides they can't do because he's a single adult? I think they'll fit on the flying rides if allowed in speedway cars. He decided to do this three night trip 16 days before his departure and is staying at the Swan on SPG points. They have park hoppers, but we have not scheduled any fast passes for Epcot. Any advice for a single dad is appreciated. Jennifer. I like this idea. I mean, dad's doing it for the kids. I mean, that's what we do as, as parents. And, uh, but I mean, that, that is kind of a, you know, it's a unique situation when you're a single parent taking kids, you, you know, you can't just, do, you can't do parent swap because you don't have anybody to, to watch the kid there. So what, what would your best advice in general in this situation be, uh, Ricky, what would you say? Cause I, I like the dad's going, you know, out of his comfort zone for the kids. That part's good. The only thing I, um, kind of wonder about is the fact that, uh, 
usually and hopefully because he's there with the the two boys it will be okay but you usually have to have someone sitting next to you if you, they're under seven that's over 14 so i don't really know how that kind of will work out with you know with that kind of situation so that may be a case-by-case -case basis on a few attractions um but hopefully they can all most of them they can all sit together and that won't be too much of a problem and i think that's probably what they're mostly worried about um but i just want to throw that out there just in case for anybody who's not thinking about it um that that may may come up but i'm not a hundred percent sure and I, again it would totally be on a case-by-case -case basis so um yeah i don't i don't know 100 percent on that the thing I think a lot of folks don't think about when they go to Walt Disney World is that because I think a lot of folks like this dad, probably if he's not a Disney fan, he probably equates Walt Disney World to like a Six Flags. And what I've noticed is that Six Flags is a lot of two by two by two kind of kind of situations where at Walt Disney World, right. Yeah. Very, very few two by two kind of situations. I think it's like the dune buggies on the Haunted Mansion or Pirate. You can put three, yeah. Four, you yeah. know, so it's, it yeah. tends to be, you know, not a two by two thing. Like, you know, traditional theme parks have a lot of that. So, Pam, what, what would you offer this dad? A little advice. Oh, I agree. And the one thing I wanted to mention too is even on rides, I think like Big Thunder, as long as the dad's there, like in the car, I think in front or behind, they typically let, you know, you all ride together. But like Ricky said, you absolutely are going to have to have a conversation with the cast members that, you know, a little bit if about they bring that. it up. Yeah. 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 If they bring it up. Yeah. yeah don't bring it up yourself. That. <laughs> no, no. Don't be like, so. Right. 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 Because right. yeah, you'll be there you know. in the car with them. So, you know, I mean, yeah, it's, not like, I agree. it's not like he's sending the two boys on their own going, see you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Hope that works out for you. <laughs> Catch up with you later. No. And I, I think too, I think when you're a single parent traveling with, you know, with more than one child or even with one child, um, I think it's important to get the kids involved in the planning process. And that happens whether you're a single parent or a family, but just doing that, I think, keeps everyone a little happier. Their expectations about the vacation are going to be different than your expectations about the vacation. And just to try to keep everyone happy when, you know, children outnumber you, <laughs> I think, yeah. you know, you got to keep that base of, of keeping folks just involved in the vacation and doing what they want and, you know, and things like that. Take, you know, frequent breaks. That's mm -hmm. always important. Enjoy that pool. We talk about that so often that enjoy, the, um, you know, the beautiful resort that you're staying at and um, hydrate. You there hydrate. you go. Hydrate. The one thing that I'll... <laughs> I'll kind of throw out there too is uh, I think you'll find a lot of hard times maybe at uh, counter service restaurants, uh, you know, especially like ones that they have multiple counters <laughs> or multiple ordering zones. Yeah, uh, yeah, boy, we all have to agree to get chicken nuggets. Though. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Everybody's getting chicken nuggets. So, you know, just, That's right. just kind of be aware of that too. Um, that, that, that may be something that they have to, to think about and consider. You know, my just go by my rule. You order a number and you don't modify it. <laughs> <laughs> well, mobile order would be really handy in that situation. It would let's be, be absolutely. Uh, let's be perfectly frank there. Mobile order is going to be key mm -hmm. for that family. I didn't say uh, his his name wasn't Frank. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you. Such <laughs> a dad joke. <laughs> yeah, I cut it out. <laughs> Guess what I got for Father's Day for my mother in law? Uh -oh. What? Taco Bell gift cards, baby. No! Oh, she's trying to kill me, one or the other. I can't decide. <laughs> anyway, Jordan's got the next question. Hi, Mike, Ricky, and Pam. I found your podcast in my planning process and have been binging episodes ever since. We're just There's like a lot of us. <laughs> my oldest son, Silas, who's six, loves to listen along, and now he is set on planning another trip during a marathon. Side note, if you guys would give him a shout out, he would be so stoked. Silas? What's up? We don't hey, Silas. What's up, Silas? No, we don't do anymore. We're not sending one out. No, just kidding. Oh. We love you, Silas. What's going <laughs> yeah. on? Listen. All right. Our trip is set for August 19th to the 25th, and it will be our second trip for our family of four. Our trips are a little different because they're actually booked through our employer and include a include our room at the Yacht Club in a seven-day park hopper pass with a trip to one of the water parks or mini golf. My first question is, are we still able to participate in a dining plan? And with the dining plan, are there notes next to the items on the menu that are included? We have ADRs at Teppanito for dinner, Cinderella's roll table for breakfast, Chef Mickey's for dinner, Sana for dinner, my mouth is watering, and 50's Primetime Cafe for lunch. Open to suggestions on any others we shouldn't miss. Character meals are a plus. All right, so she has one other question. Let's stop there. 
not knowing how she packed her, how she got this package. I don't know if she can add a dining plan or not, because it sounds like, I don't know, Pam, do you have any, I, I don't know. I've never heard anybody booking packages through their employer. That's Me something. Neither, so you'd have to check with whoever that book the packages, only packages that are booked directly through the Walt Disney travel company um, or a travel agent that books through the travel company are eligible um, to add some of these things. So that's something you have to keep in mind. She's got a really good slate of, varied meals teppanitos you know it's ethnic it's you know fun it's entertainment as they you know make the food in front of you center rolls roll table iconic in the castle chef mickey's got the fat five you're gonna meet sana's very good underrated fun meal where you can see the animals and get the bread service 50s prime time has like the the you know, it's kind of entertainment throughout the meal uh okay, ricky are we missing any there for this family what, I, think they, I mean, that? they've got a really good set of uh, restaurants, I think. So hmm. I think they're doing really, really well, um, to be perfectly honest. I, yeah, maybe I like a couple of cows. I don't know, but yeah. Yeah, um, maybe. I was thinking maybe Garden Grill if they were yeah. really, yeah. Tepani or not Tepanito, um, Tusker House is a good one too. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tusker House. Yeah. All right. So, second question We have two boys, uh, age six and two still in that sweet spot of having one for free. Are there any tours you would recommend that we can all participate in? A lot of them I saw had small kids or preschool age kids. Would a two-year-old be included in that? I, general, I generally wear him on my back in a baby character, carrier so he won't be running everywhere. Thanks for sharing all your knowledge. It has been incredibly helpful in the planning process. Jordan is in Oberlin, Ohio. 140 from Pam, 706 from Ricky, 554 from me, but her sister's in St. Peter's. So there you oh, go. Oh, there we go. He doesn't say Chuck. All right. So tours, Ricky, uh, six and two. Can they do that? Yes. Uh, I am looking and I think that that for the tours, they have to be three. The one that I was thinking of, um, which was the Disney family magic tour. Um, and that's where guests uh, can help. Save the Magic Kingdom from Disney villains, and uh, they'll test knowledge. Disney will test knowledge of Disney trivia through clues, uh, puzzles, and a scavenger hunt. Um, it's at the Magic Kingdom daily at ten o'clock. It's thirty nine dollars per person, but it does say ages three and up. So yeah, uh, yeah, I think that you do. The, yeah, I think so time. too. I think too that the, a lot of the tours too, someone that little may just get tired of it. Like it may be boring, but one of the ones I may try and do is some of the stuff over at the animal kingdom lodge, like that culinary tour. Now yeah. this is not a full blown out, you know, a tour you even have to pay for, which hello, check well, mark. That's a yeah. positive, right? And you get food. So just show up over at the animal kingdom lodge um, there on, <laughs> afternoons and that might be one that i would consider doing even with little kids because they keep it moving so good stuff all right let's hop back to the facebook live kristen has got a question how much does mardi gras affect crowds we're thinking about visiting walt disney world february 26th to march 5th i've heard that schools in the south get a week off for the holiday so i don't know if we might be better off going march 26th to april 2nd any thoughts thanks so much so, Ricky, I know that's a touringplans.com question. You know, go by there and check the crowd calendar is what I would say. But definitely. I mean, Mardi um, Gras is a big deal in St. Louis. But, I mean, I, I know a lot of folks do descend, but we don't get out of school here in the Midwest for Mardi Gras. Right. And I knew that they do for, in the, you know, like, yeah, the South. Um, that's tough because I think that other time that she's talking about is, like, peak um, spring break time. So... I mean, not peak peak, you know, peak is like at Easter, which I think is later this year, but, or next year. Uh, so I think you're going to be up against crowds either way. I might pick the Mardi Gras week just because it might be a little less, but I, I really don't know. You'd have to really check a, a crowd calendar to see what, which one, what, you know, if you really wanted to know to see which one, but I might do the Mardi Gras week. Yeah, That's I definitely go up against Mardi Gras rather than spring break because right. Mardi Gras is a very small subset of, you know, schools compared to, you know, spring breaks. Right. But of right. course, it vary from week to week, you know, throughout throughout the season but that's what i do all right stephanie's got the next one two questions for a trip she says in june uh hi mike ricky and pam my name is stephanie i've been listening to your podcast for two years now and love it i live in the cincinnati area but didn't look up how far away i live from everyone sorry that's, that's all right <laughs> i have two questions about my upcoming trip at the end of june number one my sister-in-law and her family are annual pass holders our accounts are linked and every time we have gone 
and bought Memory Maker, we've both been able to use it. My question is, we are w- will we still be able to use both the Memory Maker since our accounts are linked and it's never been an issue before? So her sister-in-law and her family are annual pass holders. They are linked on my Disney experience. Pam, they should have no problem. They should get it, right? Yep. Sh- memory maker. That's All right. It. Yep. Second question. I absolutely love everything you guys do with Give Kids the World. Thank you so much. And I'm hoping this trip I'll be able to volunteer there. I was wondering if you knew if you're able to only go in one day to volunteer or you have to give a certain amount of time. Any information you have about this would be so great. Thanks for all you do and keep up the great work. Stephanie. All right, Ricky. So tell us about volunteering Give Kids World. They, they take anything, right? <laughs> yes, I think that they do. So uh, make sure you go to givekidstheworld.org. Um, it's gktw.org, I guess I should say. Uh, there's a whole list of how to help. Um, and they will explain kind of the whole process of getting approved because you do have to go through an approval process, um, rightfully so, to um, be able to help. But they will take, I, I think that it's like a minimum of, of like four hours or something, I think, uh, or, you know, something along those lines. Um, but yeah, they'll, I mean, you can definitely go in for just one day if that's what you'd like to do. Um, and, uh, if you are curious about finding out about, um, uh, somebody's experience of recently who has volunteered, uh, go check out the Mouse for Less blog. We actually had a great article written by a blogger, Christina, uh, all about um, volunteering over at Give Kids the World. So she's got some great information about her experience over there. So um, I would definitely check that out. Yep. They need your time and talents just as much as the money. So uh, definitely do that. We appreciate that. And we've got lots going on with, uh, you know, the big indie Disney meet. You can win a trip to Walt Disney World there in late August. And we're going to have the 12-hour live show coming up. It's uh, coming, I promise. We're, we're getting close. Very we're getting close. We're very, yes. very close to announce the date. All right, next question is from Katie in the uh, chat. Can you use Disney gift cards to pay tips at restaurants? Pam, you're the queen of Disney gift cards. I saw a text <laughs> going back and forth between you and Scott. You guys were rating Target. <laughs> well, can you just use it, though? I guess you could just for a tip. I don't know. I've never done it just exclusively for a tip. Yeah, you absolutely can. So if you're staying on site, one of the things I recommend is charging everything using your magic band right back to your room. And then you can go to um, the front desk of your hotel and give them your Disney gift cards. And then they will, that will pay for whatever charges are put on your room. I think it's just easier to do it that way. Another thing I will absolutely recommend is combining your smaller Disney gift cards into one big Disney Preach. gift cards. Preach. I know, right? And we recommend this to our guests for a number of reasons. First of all, it's a lot easier to keep track of one gift card than $35, $10 gift cards. And I know that there are people out there that have these. Um, but there's just think of it this way. You don't have to worry about losing one of those. Mm-hmm. You've combined them all in one gift card. That's the only one you have to keep track of. I even keep the few that we use. Um, I, I keep a record of those and a picture of those. So in case if I did lose that one, I had a record and that money would not be lost. It's oh, just goodness. such a better idea to do this than to be juggling 35 gift cards. But if you're not staying on site and you want to use a Disney gift card to tip, you absolutely can do that. And I even went to Taco Bell gift card.com, but there's no such website. So. No, there's yeah. not. Mm. I don't I you can't combine them. Can't combine them there. <laughs> Sorry. Plus, how much money would you really want to have at Taco Bell? No, in my probably a ton. So let's not, let's not even think about that. Taco Bell. Let's just be honest. Nine bucks could feed a small country. So <laughs> just saying. All right, Philip, that probably says about the quality of their food too. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I'm, it's, I'm addicted. So anyway, best uh, Philip says best place to eat for breakfast or dinner for picky eaters, wife and son. I love how he calls out his family like I do. That's so nice. Yeah, like, like, good job, Philip. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to eat somewhere good, but now I got to eat chicken nuggets. That's how it is. So you're using dining plan credit. So give them one place, uh, like a good place for a picky eater. Ricky, oh. what do you say? So first, I'm going to say. I like almost anywhere for breakfast is a great place to go for uh, picky eaters. Um, but I am going to suggest, uh, again, I feel like I'm a broken record today. I'm going to suggest Garden Grill. I think that, uh, dude, those tater tots were awesome. So, And there's that chip and nail bake for, it's a cinnamon roll bake. Yes, it, it's where it's at. I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh, Philip added at Epcot. They're looking for Epcot. Oh, so, good. So I gave the right answer. Good. Garden Grill. You came in late. Yeah. Garden Grill. You know, because Garden Grill, it's unique in that it's a character meal, plus it's really, really good food, but it's not fancy food. Like a no. pizza eater 
I think could do okay there. I mean, would, I'm with I'm with you on Garden Grill. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, and I think it too, breakfast in general is a good place for picky eaters or any of the buffets. And you can just go ahead and you know, if you have a buffet in mind, even if it's not at Epcot, you can stop there in the morning, get breakfast, and then be on your way to the park. So that's something to consider. Plus, you're going to be um, next to when you're in Epcot, you're going to be near all of those Epcot resorts. So that's the Yacht Club and the Beach Club and the Boardwalk. And they have some great options, too. Um, the other thing I'll say for picky eaters is I think sunshine season, especially in Epcot, if you're looking for a counter service location, will be a good option for you for not only breakfast, but also other meals because they have sandwiches and hello, those desserts. Let's mm -hmm. just say that that's a great use of your snack credit over there at that. But they have things like rotisserie chicken, but they also have some more exotic options for you. So um, you don't have to be stuck eating chicken nuggets like Mike Rollman has to do. So um, consider that over there. If you're looking for table service, um, it depends on how picky your family really is. But I think most of the restaurants are going to have an option available, even for picky folks. I mean, maybe not Morocco may not be your best choice because I think most of the food there is a little more exotic, but you can just get like chicken and rice. I mean, a kebab, most people would like that. But most of the sit down restaurants are going to have something that appeal to guests. And that's the beauty of Disney. They're used to dealing with folks who may have a pickier palate, picky palate. And Joe in the chat suggests Perkins. Unfortunately, that is not a location. <laughs> appreciate Joe being in here. It was with not, it was not. He, he puts, he, he's in charge of virtual Mickey.com. So he yes. helps. <laughs> you know, I love the comedy. You know, you don't see him very often, but bam, he comes in with gold. I love it. Sorry. So at least it's not IHOB. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. <laughs> Not for real. Can yes. we pause for a moment for yes. my regular Disney thing? Like seriously, they are changing the P to a B. Well, I don't think I think temporarily for the summer, like to let you know that they still have burgers or that they have burgers, that they're not just there for breakfast. I just so. like all the other the other social media accounts from like Wendy's. And I the know that was fantastic. That was a fantastic shade. Way to go, other people. It really That's was. Awesome. I was just like, are you kidding me? So yeah. Uh, for some reason, I don't see pancakes and burgers as like a place that can do both well. Well, I'm just saying this out there, and I think I don't know if well is the sense. right word to use, but I know that like Brian has gotten uh because we'll go there for Brenner of you know every once in a while because you know Brian and I that's how we roll. And so I know that he's gotten some more dinner type options sometimes there. And there's I don't know if he's gotten a burger, but we've definitely gotten like dinner time options there. So I think that they're just letting you know that they have more than just breakfast. So I, I I don't know. Here's how you solve that. You go to you go to Denny's and you get eggs over my hammy and you're set. Oh, no, I have <laughs> way better than denny's no no way better and i love retro stuff so there you go anyway back to the disney talk back to disney oh, but i had to yes yeah, as i hub. shout out to and also by the way philip already had an adr for there Garden. we go there you go awesome See? good We're job solving the world's problems one at a time even that's Bert right Hicks. Uh, shout out to Malcolm in the chat. I know he's been struggling with some health issues, so we're glad to have him back in the chat here. So I uh, hope you're doing great, Malcolm. So glad to have you there. All right. So next question is coming from Megan with a GH in the middle. Hi, Mike, Pam, and Ricky. It actually says Pan, but we'll go with Pam. <laughs> I've recently discovered your podcast and look forward to each podcast voice. that comes out. I love that I hear you guys three times a week. So here's my question. I'm planning a Walt Disney World family trip for the week before Halloween. We're going to the Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, and Epcot and have tickets to the Halloween party. My question is related to the Magic Kingdom Day, which is our first day of the vacation. I'm wondering about the best way to plan my day with a nine and six-year-old. My nine-year-old loves Splash and Big Thunder, while my six-year-old wants to hang in Fantasyland for Seven Dwarves, Winnie the Pooh, and Peter Pan. I would like to go on Pirates myself. <laughs> Sorry, you're the adult. You don't get to pick. Um, <laughs> I plan to try for fast passes for the Fantasyland attractions and possibly rope drop the Big Thunder and Splash Mountains. Do you think that's the way to go? Is it even possible to get those fast passes or would you suggest I try something else? We're, we are going on a day when, the, when there are extra magic hours at night. We have lunch reservations for 12 at the plaza and would like to see the parade if possible. So much to do. I need help with my morning plan. Thank you. Megan is a an elementary school teacher, fifth grade. God bless you and enjoy the summer, Megan. That's all I got. To say. So <laughs> all right. So you know what? She's exact. In my opinion, she's exactly right. I would 
fast pass fantasy land stuff like seven dwarves if you can get it yeah. peter pan as well yeah. and the third one i would throw on like a big thunder or a splash one of the other two or even a pirates if you want to ride something that you want you're paying for the trip ride pirates you know what i'm saying <laughs> but i would definitely do that with fantasy land and then because i think if you rope drop and head straight to splash and big thunder people don't go there at first you know what i'm saying like do those initially schedule your fast passes for peter pan seven dwarves and whatever your third one is say around 10 or 10 30 that's what i would do pam suggestions what do you think it, improve upon my advice so i pretty much agree with you although this time when you're trying to do as many attractions as you can in magic kingdom that is the one time that i may suggest jamming in this fast passes first thing in the morning so if the park opens at nine because of the rolling fast pass the magic kingdom is the park that this truly it does. works in it does. so you may want to schedule your first fast pass for as early as you can get it let's say the park opens at nine and they let you schedule a fast pass at like 9 30 I would take that 9.30 Fast Pass, but I'd be in there before park opens, get as many attractions done that are not on your, that you weren't able to get Fast Pass for as you can. Then when that Fast Pass time comes around and you don't, have, you don't have to hit it, you know, right at 9.30, you have from 9.30 to 10.30. But whenever that comes around, go ahead and do your Fast Pass there. Keep doing other attractions. Do your one at 10.30. Then at 11.30, be at that attraction for your 11.30 Fast Pass. At 11.30, as soon as you walk through the Fast Pass queue, get another Fast Pass and keep it going. And that is the way, my friends, to do the Magic Kingdom. <laughs> Agreed. Yep. Boom. Mike, this is an expensive mic, so I'm not dropping it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it around here. We just pretend. I'll get my Bitmoji to drop a mic later on tonight. There you go. Good call. All right, we got a, you know what? We got a different Megan. And she also has a GH. What are the chances? It's what? in a row with GH <laughs> in the inbox. I don't know what's happening. It's International Megan with a GH day. Hi, Mike. I started listening to the podcast over the winter and loved the show. I was listening last week and finally decided to look up the virtual Mickey WDW Days to Go app. See Joe's in the chat. Right? <laughs> it's like it's meant to be. It's yeah. like it's meant to be. <laughs> well, you know what? When Joe wrote this. this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one got pumped up the chain of command here. Just there you uh, go. Executive decision. I absolutely <laughs> love it. It's great to be able to customize the photos on the app too. 147 days to go to my next trip for my 10th run Disney weekend. But first wine and dine race weekend. Would love to hear tips specifically for the wine and dine race weekend on an upcoming show. Thanks to you, Pam and Ricky for a great podcast. And Megan, she says best Megan. She doesn't say where awesome. she's from. All right. So, but her, her, email is disney runner and a, and a big number afterwards that's cool that you are definitely sold on run disney so why, why, i always have a hard time saying wine and dine race weekend i sound like i'm more fun wine, <laughs> wine and dine race weekend. So the biggest thing that's different between say a marathon weekend and a wine and dine race weekend is you gotta compensate for the heat it is hot still in november at walt disney world the heat has zapped me more than one wine and dine weekend um now that they've moved it to the morning, I think it is even more hot, even though I don't know, because I try to think about it at night. It was just like, it stayed like as Pam would call it. It stayed close. Like the races would start at like 11, but it would just, even though it was dark, it just never cooled off and it was super humid. It's still hot in the mornings, but I'd say the biggest thing is to prepare for the heat and the crowds are pretty insane that weekend. The crowds are crazy that weekend. Cause it's a very end of wine and dine. It's usually Jersey week. Race and weekend. It's usually the, yeah, yeah. It's last weekend for food and wine too. And it's yeah. Veterans Day too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, usually, yeah. Crazy crowded that weekend. But Ricky, you've run that race. So any, they've been there that race. With Pam, you've been there that race weekend too. But Ricky, any other advice for wine and dine? I, you know, yeah. I think the best advice is to hydrate during that that whole time because it, like you said, it gets. It gets a little humid. Uh, it's still a little humid uh, that time of year. So uh, it's not as cool as you think it's going to be. Just because it says November on the calendar doesn't mean anything. <laughs> so, yeah, it's 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 warm. So just hydrate a lot. And I think you'll that's be okay. Because I, I've never heard the word close mentioned except for Pam Forrester. Like, that's the first thing we use it all the time now. But last night, listening to the Cardinals game, John Rooney, our announcer, said, <laughs> so close here in St. Louis. And I was like, whoa, it's Whoa. Crazy. 
It spread and it was on the ball game. All right, Pam. Yeah, I didn't make up the. I did not make up this phrase. And actually, we learned it when Steve and I were first married. We lived in this apartment building, and this very nice man from England um, lived there, and he would tell us <laughs> that it's close, and we were like, "It is close." You're absolutely right. The, you're the, a lot close to us. The yes. molecules <laughs> are so close that it feels like you're like wading through soup. So yes, yeah, the true. firm stock. But it's anyway. a little soupy. A little soupy out there. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Um, what would you say, Pam, to this uh, question? I can't even remember what. Oh, we're wine and dine race weekend. Like, what sticks out to you? Mike <laughs> lost it. For He's me, it's fine. heat and crowds. I mean, that's that's kind of it's a fun race to run. It's I'm not sure. Run it. It's a fun race. And the, it is heat and crowds. And the other thing is, you're going to want to schedule some time um, to ap- actually stop and enjoy the wine yeah. and dine food booths. I mean, that's what you're there for. Probably not while you're running. Like, no, they no. probably won't be. There's an after party with that race. That's there a is an after party, but it's so late. I don't, I don't know. Well, they cha- <laughs> since the race is in the morning now, that's it true, makes it a little true. better than when we did it, when it was after the race that was already at night. <laughs> I would think so. Hopefully, now they can take a nap. You know, yeah. when we did it, it was it was like you literally as soon as you were done running at one, two in the morning, you then had, you know, after party until four in the morning. And you, you said, no, I'm done. I can't. I can't do anymore. <laughs> I can't. Were yeah. you there, I think it was the very first wine and dine race weekend after the race because it was it was a night race back then. It yes. was super hot the first year. They yes. People were laying in World Showcase. Like I, ha- yes. I had some lady pass out on they were me. Passing yes. out. Yes. Yeah. Passing out because you had to go through like the old World Show place to get your checked bags. Yep. Like yes. I remember I ran it with Adam. I remember this first time, like one of the very first times I met Adam, my buddy, and like we got a picture on the rail and we were both just sweaty messes. Cause yep. right, I remember that photo. But do you remember? Like, I remember that I was, it was either the first or second one. I think we were sitting down by Sunshine Seasons after the race and I got a wicked, like, Charlie horse in my. Yes. <laughs> <I> <laughs> so loud. I'm nice yes. Time. <laughs> I was like, I think I'm dying. I think I'm dying. Just. Please tell somebody that I'm, I love them. I'm t- <laughs> tell somebody I love them. Somebody, <laughs> random folks. I didn't care. I'm going to die. Just tell everybody I love everybody. I'm going out. I still love those. My memory from wine and dine. Okay. Anyway, uh, we have a legit question here. Let's get to oh, this okay. last one of the day. We got so many of them here. Let's. Uh, this one's really good because we're getting in 29 packages. Hi, BOGP, BOGP crew. Planning a trip for 2019. We'll be traveling with our two small children. They're going to be three and one and a half. Trying to decide between the contemporary or a suite at Art of Animation, which would you recommend? So again, it's family of four, kids three and one and a half. I got to say contemporary if you can swing it because you're right there walking to the Magic Kingdom. Pam, what do you say? I know. And having just stayed at the contemporary, you know, in the last few weeks here uh, you know it was one of those resorts that i sort of remembered why i have such a soft place in my heart for the contemporary the fact that there are that you can walk to the magic kingdom priceless forget the monorail being able to walk to the magic kingdom is just awesome i really enjoy that and then you can also take the boat over to Wilderness Lodge and Fort Wilderness. I find that to be a big plus as well. Um, then you have the monorail resort. And of course, if you want to go to Epcot, you can take the monorail over to the TTC and transfer there and head over there. So that's where I would lean if you can swing it too, um, if there's not as much of a price difference. And remember, those garden wing rooms are less expensive than the tower view room although there is a big plus to lay in a bed and being able to look out at the castle so all that into consideration for sure and the chat is on it because they're having a nice conversation about pros and cons of both and mm-hmm. you know the, the theming is going to really appeal at art of animation to kids that age which is a bonus you're going to get two bathrooms and a family suite that's a bonus i don't know if you really need that with four People now in my situation, we're a family of four. Two bathrooms is awesome because I've been known to walk down to the food court area to go to the bathroom down there because like I can never get in. Like my number never gets called, you know, because I got. <laughs> so that's just my my uh, thing. So uh, Ricky, what do you, I, I could say something and I'm not gonna. Um, <laughs> I walk down to everything, pop, go to the bathroom because like I can't get in. You know. Anyway, go ahead. T- TMI. <laughs> yes, thank you for that <laughs> visual. Really awesome. Um, Anyway, I was going to say uh, contemporary as well. I think that the ease of being on the monorail loop is just so priceless for that age. Uh, But I mean, I understand where the chat is coming from with art of animation. You know, it's 
definitely a cool resort for that age group, especially because you do have, you know, the larger than life characters and things like that. So, um, it, it, it'll just depend on, on kind of whether the theme of the resort matters more to you or the transportation matters more. Yeah. So. Cause you're going to work harder to get to the parks at art of animation. Right. You're going to have a lower price point. You're going to have two bathrooms, but you got to deal with like buses and stuff where again, you're going to go to the other parks. So it just, it just depends. But I mean, can, you know, contemporary, if you're just focusing on magic kingdom, especially Epcot, boom, you're set. All right. So that's going to do it for today's show. Thanks for all the great questions. Keep sending those in to Mike at BeOurGuestPodcast.com and we'll answer those right away. Uh, Ricky, today's show brought to you by VirtualMickey.com, home of great iPhone apps like Theme Park News, Disney Edition. What are we reading about? I hope it didn't blow up your spot about the buses on my Disney. I mean, I was going to talk about the buses, but I have something else to talk about. So you're fine. Okay. Um, so as many of you know, Fourth of July is coming up. Uh, so there's lots of different things for guests to be able to do for the 4th of July season at Walt Disney World. Um, so you've got the Magic Kingdom fireworks on both the 3rd and the 4th. Uh, a dance party in Frontierland and Tomorrowland because you got to have a dance party. Uh, Illuminations has a special fireworks finale on July 4th only. There's also Voices of Liberty, which is performing. Um, in the America Gardens Theater uh, at, in the evening, and then Disney characters dressed up in Fourth of July attire uh, at the American Adventure. Uh, Hollywood Studios is having the Star Wars Galactic Spectacular fireworks. I don't really know what's Fourth of July ish about that, but that's something that they clearly wanted people to know about, so they mm -hmm. announced it. And I love that they didn't announce anything about Rivers of Light this year. So they're just like, yeah, we have Rivers of Light, but we're not going to announce it. So if you're in Animal Kingdom, you can catch Rivers of Light. Um, there's also uh, patriotic treats, uh, like, of course, a Fourth of July cupcake at Creature Comforts and Isle of Java at Animal Kingdom. Uh, and you've got uh, a Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse mini dome cakes at Emirates. And then, Mike, I think that this is probably the most interesting especially for the lizards of the group uh there's gonna be a fourth of july 5k yeah. race yes that takes I, place. Scott, I said we we're doing this and it's not even on the fourth of july it's on the third it's on the third it takes place at fort wilderness pre-registration is available from the 24th to the 30th uh at the fort wilderness bike barn an on-site uh registration begins at 7 a.m uh at the field next to mickey's backyard barbecue and the race begins at 7 30 a.m um, on the 3rd of July. Um, so, you know, lizards who are down there can go run that, which sounds pretty awesome. There's also the 4th of July golf cart parade, which takes place on the 4th of July. Now that's, and, a, that's America right there. I mean, absolutely. Parade. Absolutely. 100%. Um, and then there's going to be a uh, beach bash at Clementine's Beach. So exciting things. 4th of July weekend. That's right. Or, Sam, actually, it's not even a weekend this year. It's like 4th of July, middle of the week. <laughs> Amigo will be proud of these offerings. Yes. yes. So. All right. So yeah, we'll get some lizards over there to Fort Wilderness. Going to plan on doing that. I mean, as long as we were only worried that maybe it was only uh, open to Fort Wilderness guests because I could see a lot of folks showing up for this thing. Run Disney people are crazy. I mean, I, lizards are nuts. I mean, they. I hope they know what they're getting themselves into. With I know, but they have advertised it, so I'm guessing that it's probably for all. So yay be there then all right and scott will too yeah right, remember wear your patriotic uh running shorts you know, oh let's... my uh please take pictures <laughs> if uh that's taking place yes all right and all this news again available for free on your apple device over at virtualmickey.com theme park news disney edition thanks again to virtualmickey.com don't forget you can follow the show on instagram and twitter at be our guest pod and at be our guest mike going to be lighting that up in eight days so make sure you're tuned in for that also great facebook page facebook.com slash be our guest podcast and don't forget to support the show over at brguestpodcast.com slash Amazon when you do all that online shopping. All right, we're going to be back again on a Friday, but come to the show not hungry because we're going to be talking <laughs> Disney dining at its best. Some of our favorites all around the resort. So stay tuned for that. But until then, for Ricky and Pam, I'm Mike. Wishing you a great Wednesday. Time to head back to work and we'll see you real soon. Yay. See you Pam. Where'd you go? She disappeared. Box all of a sudden. It's just me and you. Oh, wait, was it one, three, four, four? I'm hungry. <laughs> do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Where's Pam? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, we gotta figure that out. Did she just drop off? Um. 
Can I? Let's, I'll add her back in and see what happens. But it's just like it's not showing her camera. Oh, there she is. Oh, it says you put me in the lobby. Did yeah. I say something wrong? <laughs> Am I in timeout? You're in timeout, Pam. What the heck? You can hear. I can't hear. I can hear. I can't. Oh, Mike can't hear you, Pam. Can I you hear can't Mike? See either. She's just like a big, like black rectangle. Hear. You can hear him. I can hear him. Oh. She, like on the screen, it's just a black rectangle where she, her camera should be. Can well, you see me, Ricky? Out and I can't hear Yeah, her. I can see you and hear you. She said uh, She said that uh, you put her in the lobby. So put her back in the lobby and put her back in. Okay. Hang on. Well, she's in the thing right now. I'm put her in the lobby. Yeah. Well, yeah, put her in the lobby. Okay. And then okay. put her back in. That's what I just did, though. And nothing happened. Well, I know. It worked for me. Okay, there. She, I still can't see her or hear her. You can't see her? Yeah. Then the main feed, like, I can see that she's added as a third camera. We're getting all three camera shots, but I can't see her because her, her, she's blacked out. That's and weird. Her. Do you want to send a new mm -hmm. link? Send another link. Yes, this the is podcasting at its best right here. We're trying to figure out how to get Pam. That's right. Exactly. I wonder if everybody on Facebook can see her. Yeah. Pam? Can you guys see Pam? Because I doubt you can either. Because I can't. I'm looking at the Facebook I, feed. I can. I'm looking at. Let's see here. I'm looking at the Facebook. You can hear all of us. That's interesting, Christine. Because I cannot. Pam. Uh, see, I can Mike, see and hear see, all of us. Mike, you know. I'd like to send a new link, Ricky. Mike, why don't you? Oh, yeah. I guess I could. I should have conveyed that information. I'm sorry. That was totally <laughs> my fault. I forgot that he couldn't hear you. Um, Mike, Pam says just send another link. Why don't. If you want to do that. Like go all the way. Well, then we'll drop everybody, though. Oh, Mike doesn't want to we'll drop. Just, then, yeah, the, then is there we'll a way Pam can up. go all the way out and just come back in and click on the link? Is that a work? Yeah, Pam, go all the way out and then, oh, and then click. Oh, wait. No, she's gone. No, I I lost her. Everybody, oh, here she is. Yeah, now I see her. Okay, here she comes okay. in. Okay. <laughs> what are you doing? You're making it hard here. What are you? Can you see her now? You are the only one who could not see. <laughs> I, I was like, well, it's going to be hard to do. I wouldn't have cared, but I was like, it's going to be hard to do the show if I can't hear you. <laughs> I would have had to work as the liaison between the two of yeah. you. I've been like one of those. I'm going like, to have to learn sign language quickly. Yeah, half our Ricky. doesn't speak English, so that's exactly what it is. Like, it's like we got the translator guy speaking Spanish to the player. The player's like, just like exactly. I'm like, yeah. I know we're not saying that word for word because the the guy asked something for like eight minutes and like. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's like, blah, 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 and they're like, see, you know, this is like, this is like a short answer. <laughs> it would have been Ricky who had to host the show because she would have been the only one that could hear all three of us. <laughs> Get it. Forget it. Mike wouldn't allow that. <laughs> Just send me, Philip, send me an email. Mike at BeerGuestPodcast.com. We'll get you on schedule. We're booked out for a year, but if you're patient, we'll get you in there. We can get we you in. Cut into May. Actually, I've got the Monday shows already recorded through almost July. Wow. We got some, and we got some good ones coming up, man. We have some fun ones. They are hilarious. That's awesome. Yep. Can't wait okay, to hear so them. what are we doing? Okay, so no, you knock that off right now, Pam Forster. Yawn over there. I'm not <laughs> sleeping here. anymore because I have so much work. So oh. something's got to give. There's going to be an occasional yawn. All right, fine. Yes, especially tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, so we're doing the best thing we've ever eaten at us as far oh, as oh my snack. gosh. Yes. Quick service, a table service, and a signature. Correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Some of them are harder than I would think, though, I because know. I think when you go frequently, you just kind of do stuff without thinking that much of it. In fact, True. I just had this conversation with my family. Some of my vacation plans, it's like a drunk person has been making plans. <laughs> like It's like you gave the assignment to a drunken adult or a toddler and said, please make reservations for these trips. And someone went in there within 10 or 15 minutes, did it. Some of them were good choices. Some of them were not so good choices. I'm just going to say these things. <laughs> the good thing is you're never going to go hungry. You'll find something. Funny. Yeah. That is true. It is just funny though. Um, sometimes funny. when you're thinking about stuff like this. That so. is. All right. Here we go. 1345. Welcome to episode 1345 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Less Travel. Happy Friday to you guys. You made it to the weekend. That's awesome in itself. And we got a podcast out. It's fun. We're talking Disney. Life is good. 
2019 packages are available. Lots of fun there. Thinking about, I can't believe it. Like it's the middle of 2018. I'm already thinking about fall and winter of 2019. I know. Low in my mind because of Star Wars and Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Toy Story will be uh, just another land. It'll be just like a oh, Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, we'll go there. Yeah. No, it won't be. It'll be like Pandora still is, but it's going to be fun. So uh, just lots of stuff going on. We're going to have a fun Disney discussion today revolving around food. So go grab some Ho-Hos or some cupcakes or something. You're going to need a snack. <laughs> what I do every afternoon, I get the peanut butter crackers. You know, the like orange crackers. Oh, those are good. Those are solid. Get that in a Coke Zero and you, you're you good for another couple hours. Whatever it takes, you're going to have to need, you're going to need something to get through today's show. Just warning. If you're running this morning, like, you know, I listen to podcasts when I run, my apologies. I am so sorry. So uh, <laughs> hang in there, bud. You'll make it. Keep running. Keep the pace up. All right. Joining me today for this fun Disney topic brought to you by, by one of our listeners. We have Ricky from a Disney World After All.com, touringplans.com, and the Mouse for Less. What's up, Ricky? I have a feeling I'm going to have a very hard time with this episode. <laughs> it is so hard to come up with these answers. And like, I'm going through and I'm changing my mind as we speak too. So <laughs> I know the thing is, don't hold us to this. Like, I mean, if you see me down at Walt Disney world here in like a week and a half, don't say you're not eating what you said was your favorite snack. Right? You know, I will eat other things. I'm just saying like, this is a, this is just a, an, an exercise as we call it, you know, so right. we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. Pam Forrester is joining us from the magic for less travel. Happy Friday, Pam. We're almost to Walt Disney world. We're so close. We are close. Happy Friday. Um, thank you to everyone who submitted 2019 Walt Disney world <laughs> requests. Um, and just to let you know, we do this every year. We've been doing it for a while. We have an, what we call an early booking savings for all guests who book. So for this year, it'll be booking your 2019 vacation during the first month of the release. We offer extra bonuses, extra incentives um, for people who do that. Um, we feel like that's the fairest way to do it because it's not like we're only giving them to people who booked you know, for this, like in July, if I said, well, people who book a July vacation get like a special deal. And then people are like, hey, I've been booked for nine months. Why don't I get the special deal? This is the best way to do it. We do it the first month that they release and everybody gets them. Um, so contact your Magic for Less travel agent if you want to hear about those. And yes, as, in terms of these favorites, these food favorites that we're going to talk about, yeah. There will be a lot of, well, this is my other favorite, right? <laughs> that These are other favorites there. So, I mean, these are favorites that we thought of right now, but yes, this yeah, changes. It'll, it'll change awesome. frequently. Yes by, yes. by season, by moment, by. By new yeah. thing that Disney comes oh, out with, yeah. uh, oh, especially yeah. as far as the snacks are concerned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. For you sure. Know, before we dive into our favorites though, and what we're going to talk about today is we're going to name our favorite snack quick service meal table service meal then go out to our favorite signature meal at walt disney world at this time but ricky you bring up a great point before we dive into these favorites is that i think one of the reasons walt disney world is such a great destination for vacation is the diversity you know it's always changing it's fluid especially in food i mean i'd say in the last five to ten years you know the foodie factor you know it really kind of like gastric vacationing has become a thing and Walt Disney World's like epicenter for that. Oh my gosh, of course. Yeah, it's even changed. I mean, in the past I want to say, you know, 3 years or so, it's gotten even more so. Um it's just kind of crazy, you know. I I constantly th I see new things that I'm like, well, I guess I need to try that for the blog or whatever. So, you know, Disney is definitely. I think for a while, uh, especially years ago, they were just like, okay, this is this is good, this is enough. You know, we don't need to introduce anything new or whatever. And now I feel like they're just constantly upping the game, which is great for you know those of us who uh, really like to eat. So <laughs> I mean, they, they have the food and wine festival, which is really a celebration oh, of, true. you know, different dining experiences. Pam, I mean, you've seen this really probably not even in the last decade, but probably the last five years. I mean, we joke about Disney coming out with a cupcake for every season, every That's holiday. True. No, every week, every week, every month. Yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah. You know, every time the wind blows. But I mean, yeah. they're really, they are making the food an essential, essential part of every Disney vacation. I mean, you've, you're seeing that a lot, Pam, I mean, because what's the first thing we do? We schedule ADRs at 180. I mean, it's kind of the... That's yeah. The oh, for sure. And I think they've really, you know, 
I've seen Disney be able to adapt and implement things much faster than they used to in the past, especially when it comes to implementing a new food or getting a new menu or something like that. That's something that they used to be very slow at, but now, and they've really seemed to like catch on to more food crazes or, and want to make sure that those are in the park because I know Mm -hmm. That if people can get those there, that they'll be there. I mean, the well, cupcake thing pink is cupcake, everywhere. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, the cupcake things are everywhere. But they even do it at other places. Like when you think about, they get new drinks, they get new sandwiches, they get new food, they get new restaurants, and the influx of the restaurants in Disney Springs has to have an effect on that because those aren't necessarily Disney restaurants. They're on Disney property, but they're sometimes managed by outside companies who have really, I think, push Disney, right, in a good way to make those changes faster, to make sure they're incorporating more food trends, to make sure they're addressing things quicker than they used to. And I think that's good for all of us. All right. So get ready. We're going to give our favorites. We're going to ask for yours over the weekend on Facebook. So drop by because the whole point of the show is that, you know, we're going to say something like, I totally forgot about that. And maybe I'll see it on the Facebook page. And then next week, I'm going to use your idea and have your snack or your quick service meal, whatever. So uh, when we all do that, we're going to have a big pool of stuff we have to eat over the next uh, you know, time span of our trip. So let's start off with counter service locations, you know, places where you don't have ADRs, you walk up, you get your food and you sit down. Let me, let me mention one thing about counter service for those folks that may be new to the Disney game here, just real quick. Mobile ordering has come to restaurants at Walt Disney World. And this is something you need to have on your radar because it's great for just maximizing your time. If you're standing in a queue for Space Mountain or for Pirates and you know you know you're going to be hungry by the time the the, the, the attraction's done because maybe you're in a 20 minute queue and then the ride itself takes 10 minutes, you know, and you're going to be hungry in a half hour. You're maximizing your time. And plus, you look like a rock star when you get to the restaurant. You walk up, you get your food. They're like, who is that? It's like it's like back in the day when FastPass started. Like, who is that person walking right past me? Yeah, that mobile ordering, buddy. Yep. I got this game figured out. So don't forget to do that. Have it ready to go. Try it once. I think you'll be set on that. So just something to think about there. So mobile ordering with counter service, just want to make that next Disney vacation better. So Pam, let's start off with you. If you had to, what's your go-to for a counter service meal? Favorite one right now? Well, so this is interesting because this is something that has recently changed because my favorite counter service meal right now is at the Satuli Canteen. Um, I love, okay, so let me, let me set the stage for you because I've come to really enjoy this. So you get to pick a protein, you get to pick a base and you get to pick a sauce or a dressing. I'm not sure what they call it there, but anyway, Um, so I always pick the chicken. The chicken is so incredibly moist. It is roasted over a fire. Um, and they use chicken thighs, which makes it really moist. You know how that makes such a huge difference. I always pick, um, the multigrain rice, the brown rice, um, or multigrain rice, whatever they call it. I'm not sure. Um, I think it's great. And I pick, um, the herby, the herby ranch or the herby, whatever it's called. In other places that's called yum, yum sauce. (laughs) This is good. It's just all really good. But I've had it on a few different bases. I've had it on the potato hash, which is great too. It mixes a bunch of different kinds of potatoes together for that. I've had it on a salad if I'm looking for something a little lighter. Um, It all works good. But I'm telling you, that is a great meal. My only complaint about Satuli Canteen and this is me. It is not other people because other people love this. I don't like either of the desserts, really. Oh. I just don't. I know, right? I, See, the I'm, chocolate one is where it's at for me, but I know I Brian know. really I, likes I, the I blueberry. Said, this is totally me. This is totally me because other yeah. people like them. I want, like, I don't know. I'm not, I don't love either of those really sweet desserts. Like, I want, I don't know, some berries or something. <laughs> they can maybe put that together for me, and put some whipped cream on it. I'd be perfectly happy. But there you, go. you know what? I can go outside and get something there. So I'm all good. But yes, love Satuli Canteen. Love the atmosphere. Um, I like that you can get your own drinks. I am an iced tea drinker. 
And when I drink iced tea, I can drink like three of them. And then, of course, I'm visiting the bathroom because you only rent iced tea. But That's I right. love and also you, you're not allowed to get in line for flights of passage or flights right of passage because uh, too much tea. And there's Very no true. But I love being able to go back up and get some more iced tea. Um, and so this is a big plus. So all around, I just love Satoli. All right. So good. So, you know, for the dessert, you could have like a county fair, like deep fried banshee or something, you know? Maybe. Yeah, right. Like an Oreo. <laughs> deep fried banshee. All right, Ricky, what do you say? What's your favorite go to counter service right now? Okay. So since Pam took mine, uh, I'm going to go. <laughs> I don't want to copy her, uh, but I agree with everything she said. Also, cheeseburger pods are life. Um, so, yes, they're amazing. Um, but, and I'm probably going to steal Mike's now, uh, but my next favorite place to go to is actually Pecos Bills uh, at the Magic Kingdom in Frontierland. Uh, again, I love, love, love the, the fact that they are offering options that are unique and different for um, Walt Disney World. They're not just burgers and and chicken nuggets and hot dogs. And, and I think that Pecos Bills, because they have kind of a Mexican flair to uh, the meals here where we, you can get like burritos and, you know, tacos and stuff like that, like is really, really good. Plus they have the fixins bar. So you can definitely load up on anything else that you want. Uh, it's just, it's seriously, it's so, so yummy. Uh, you get so full because of the fixins bar, <laughs> um, you know, adding on top of, of everything. And it's just, it's really, really good. I love what they've done with Pago Spill. So um, well done, Disney, on making that just a destination that I have to go to when before I didn't even touch Pecos Bill. <laughs> so um, good job, Disney. Definitely. Yeah, that, that's a place I definitely go to a couple times a trip, you know, as well as Satuli Katine. I, I love it as well. Um, those are two of my top picks. If I had to go to my top one that we haven't mentioned yet, I would say Columbia Harbor House. I love the what's that called? The lobster roll. Cause I'm not yeah. in the Northeast, but that thing, that sandwich there, it's so fresh and light and it's, it's so good, especially in the summertime. It's really good. And the good thing about um, Columbia Harbor house, it's got a lot of uh, atmosphere to it. You know, you can sit upstairs. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows about that. The, where you can look over the haunted mansion uh, there. That's a great place to sit you know, and get all your condiments and stuff. But also in the wintertime, if you're there like for marathon weekend, they have really good clam chowder. They just have a lot of really unique, items you know and it, it's it's a place where i can get seafood and my family can get chicken yeah i'm saying because like mallory can get chicken nuggets and fries she's happy as a clam i can get a lobster roll or i can get the fried shrimp what have you and i just like going in there it just it feels very disney to me just like pecos bills you know because it's like it's kind of like eating in a dungeon like i love that feel especially in the summer when it's not, <laughs> you know, it's like it's cool in there um but yeah i'll go uh columbia harbor house so that, i think we got three solid choices there you can't go wrong ever at any of those three agreed all right, let's go. Not signature. Let's go table service. Non-signature favorite place to eat. Ricky, where are you going? The, this was just the the one that popped in my head immediately, and it's it's fifties prime time. Uh, I I can't, you know, given the fact that there are so many like at at Hollywood Studios, dining is a little iffy, uh, especially for counter service. So when I'm visiting Hollywood Studios, I'm more than likely end up booking an ADR. Usually it is for 50s prime time and I eat just one giant meal while I'm there and then I snack the rest of the time that I'm at the park. So um, I love the whole kitchen of the whole place. I love that it's themed after, uh, you know, mom's kitchen, that she's cooking the meal for you, that your relatives are there to serve you, uh, that they kind of have fun with you, play games sometimes. Uh, you know, obviously we've had this discussion that some of those shtick has died off a little bit, but it's still fun when they do kind of have fun with you. Um, I've had some amazing meals here. The food is fantastic and the sampler platter is where it's at because you can get the mac and, or the mac and cheese. You can get the the fried chicken, the meatloaf and the pot roast. I don't know where mac and cheese came from. That was weird. <laughs> um, that's not even like one of the things that's listed on that menu. Um but yeah, it's so so good. I it just it, I leave so full. So um definitely 50s prime time to me is where it's at. Oh, man, we this is why we're I know we're, we're a podcast team because that is solid. That's one of my choices too, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll go with a different one. All right, Pam, what do you say for table service? So this just like my counter service one, this is gonna be one that is a newer restaurant in Walt Disney World. Um, and is my favorite at the moment. We eat here every time we go. I think and I know what is it is. Homecoming. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> it is. You know, there is just something about this restaurant. First of all, it keeps everyone in my family really happy too. Um, the food, there's just so many good choices, and I'll describe a few. No, oh, we just lost Pam. You put her back in the wait <laughs> waiting room again. I didn't do anything. I didn't touch anything. Oh, that, that's weird. Pam, you there? Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> totally just, I wouldn't even, I didn't even have my hands on the computer. I was sitting here. So to start over, so go back to you. Okay, so do, you're given homecoming. So, so do it. Start, yeah, all, start all over. over. Okay. Yeah. All right. So my favorite table service restaurant is going to be just like the counter service restaurant in that um, it's a newer restaurant. And um, this is my favorite one of the moment. We go here almost every time we're there. Yeah. Love this place. Um, and it is homecoming. Chef yes. Chef homecoming. And um, there's just so much to love about this restaurant. They have so many great choices from appetizers to entrees to sandwiches to salads to drinks. Um, they're great, um, you know, moonshine drinks. But no matter what you're looking for, you can find it there. They have great appetizers like they call it the ham ham and jam biscuits, ham, ham and jam. And they're so, so good. They have ham and and um, pimento cheese and um, blackberry fig jam. I mean, really, really good. They've recently also added thigh high chicken biscuits, which are biscuits with some chicken, some fried chicken thighs on there and with honey and hello and pickles. It's all good. Mm -hmm. But they have salads too. And we've actually, I've actually ordered some of these salads, a couple of them. They have um, a great salad that has grouper on it. They have another one that has um, chicken and has some hush puppies, but you know, other things like that. So think about that. They also have some heavier food. Um, and you know, these are someone's favorites too: the fried chicken, the macaroni and cheese, um, so many great entrees too, and desserts. Oh my gosh, so oh, yeah. many good desserts. I've never so, had the desserts because I always leave so full know, from the other stuff. I know, right? I know yeah. we rarely are able to make it to dessert, but the ones that we have have been fantastic. Um and I just think that there's something for everyone to like there. When you go there, you're going to find something that you like. They're grouper outstanding. They have a grouper sandwich, grouper salad, and just grouper over green. So you can eat healthily there too. You don't have to have the fried chicken and donuts, but I know that's what Mike would order. Yes. <laughs> but that's what I got. Yeah, that's what I, and that's what I will get again. But the uh, thing is like too, the thing I noticed about my first time to home, homecoming, if you've never been there and you're excited about going there, is that when they bring out the sides, they are gigantic. Yeah. Like you got to, cause we, we went crazy. We like, we love cornbread. We get that at Kendrick's, you know, every Thursday at the barbecue place. We love Mac and cheese. We love, we got, um, I think we tried okra or something like mm -hmm. that. I mean, but like, yeah. they're like family size almost like, you know, we thought they were individual size. We, we made a mistake there. So they're very shareable. Yeah, they are. Definitely. They are. And the service there for us has always just been outstanding, really and truly. It's the kind of place where your servers really will help guide you. And we've had, you know, a manager come around just about every time and ask us how everything was. And they just really go out of their way to make things spectacular there. So I have to recommend that place over and over and over over again. Although I don't want anyone trying to go there when I want to go there. Right? It's becoming very difficult to get that restaurant now. So, And Alan in the chat saying he gives the nod to Rosen Crown at the UK, which I had never been to until I went on my tour last summer. And that's where we ended up. We had a meal there, lunch at the end, had the scotch egg or scotch egg. Oh, that's so one. good. Yes. Love so, the scotch I'm, egg. Make sure I go there this summer. So good call, Alan. Uh, let's see. Ella, uh, Elise uh, says Ohana is her favorite uh, non-signature table serves Ohana salad. So hard to get an ADR, but that's a solid choice. If I had to pick, you know, if I had to like, you know, I'm going to the electric chair. This is my last table service meal. At, uh, wow, this got dark <laughs> real quick. <laughs> that's I'm at this. Whoa. Oh, I'm at this, is there something you should tell Ricky? <laughs> oh, so hey, I can table. continue on. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I'm just throwing down some context for today's show. I'm taking you to the chair tomorrow. This is where your last meal is at Walt Disney World. So you repeated it. You know what? I'm going to Trails End. I love Trails End. Oh, you know what's you scary? Go. You know what? I'm going to say what's scary. Every single restaurant the three of us named has fried chicken. <laughs> 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 You know, here's the whole thing. You go over there, you got the atmosphere of Fort Wilderness, which you know what? It forces you to take that that nostalgia, you know, view of Walt Disney World. It slows you down for a little bit. You get to go over there to the kids' school hoop while you're waiting. 
unfortunately, I will say that they've been a mess with large groups lately the last yeah. couple of years, but hopefully they'll correct that. We won't have as large of a group this summer, so hopefully we'll get over there. Um, but I think everybody can find a lot of stuff on that buffet that is very much comfort food and that everybody will enjoy. You know, from the picky eater to the, there's not a lot of exotic, but I mean, you have just a lot of good comfort food and good comfort desserts, strawberry shortcake, cookies, you know, uh, like chocolate cake, ice cream, stuff like that. So, and the thing is, like, I mean, if I was going to the electric chair, I guess the state would be paying for my last meal, so I wouldn't have to worry about the cost. But you know what? I'm probably <laughs> not I'm paying the bill, so it's a it's a good uh, value. it's a pretty good value. It's so a I'm, great value, yeah. In terms of Disney, absolutely. Yeah, yeah and it's just you know, and the, it, the the cast members there, and they're good everywhere, but they're really you know very friendly and and kind there. Um, and I just like going to Fort Wilderness. It, it's a good, it gets, it gets me out of that, like rush, rush, rush mindset of, you know, being in a theme park. So trails in for me. All right, let's go to signature dining, which I don't do a lot of Ricky. I don't think you do a lot of either, but, uh, okay. So you, again, let's, let's frame it. This is your last meal. Walt Disney world. You're getting a table service meal. Pam, where are you going? I think I know where you're going, but I'm not 100%. I have a feeling that we all know where know. she's going. I know, but you know what? This is really challenging for me because there are a couple that are in my rotation that we try to go to almost every trip. And it bounces between like two or three or four <laughs> all the time. But if I'm picking one, I'm going to pick California Grill just yeah. because for just the long standing tradition that we have of going there. And we've really just had so many great meals there over the years that I love it. It has great views, great food. We typically get great service there, but I'm going to give the nod to some other ones. I'll mention a few other ones, flying fish. Um, great. Jico, fantastic. Yachtsman. So good. I mean, Really, we've had great meals at at all of these restaurants. So it's just a really challenging choice. It is. I mean, because these, you know, the signature restaurants, obviously the best of the best when it comes to, you know, dining at Disney. So and actually dining really any place in, in, on the planet for a lot of us. All right. So, Ricky, what do you say? What's your favorite signature? Hands down, my favorite signature restaurant at Walt Disney World is Tiffin's. It is at Animal Kingdom, and it is so fantastic. I've had the best meals of my life here. Um, it, it's so good with the beef. Oh, my gosh. It's just it's tender. It's it, it, like you don't even really need a knife to cut it. It's so good. Cuts like butter. Um, and then it's where I, I've had the octopus there. I love that. It's fantastic as well um i they the dessert is really good I, I just i feel like they've done such a fantastic job over at tiffin's um i like that you can do the rivers of light dining package with it i think it's a fantastic deal for disney uh so you know just there's so much good that ha happens over at tiffin's that i you know i think that you absolutely if you're looking for a signature dining experience especially at animal kingdom which you know doesn't have a whole lot of table service restaurants i think this is going to be a really really great place to go to for you so let me ask you this ricky because you know we're a year into pandora now you know it used to be like look over the fence they're building it it's been around now for a year the crowds are still high there but is tiffin still kind of a, a hidden gem is it still kind of a secret of walt disney world Honestly, I think it is because I feel like so many people don't think about it or they think the food looks a little weird, exotic, because, you know, like I said, it's got octopus on the menu and it's got a few other things like a whole fish, um, which includes a head. So, I mean, it definitely has some interesting things on the menu. But and, and as a self-proclaimed picky eater, you know, um, I mean, let's let's face it. I mean, I've eaten octopus, you know, I never thought that I would do that. But this is a place that made me want to just decide, hey, you know what, let's just try it. Let's see how it is. So because uh, I knew that if, if any place was going to do it where I liked it, it was going to be at this place because it's just so primo. They just do a fantastic job with everything that they do. So I absolutely 100 percent put my faith behind Tiffin's and I think that you'll love it, too. Cool. All right. Before I get mine real quick, Pam, what do you think of Tiffin's? Cause I haven't been there again. I just, I, again, I didn't even think about it when I was trying to think about all these restaurants. I haven't been there, so I wouldn't have picked it, but it, is it still a hidden gem and is it uh, something people should seek out? 
I agree. Yeah, Tiffin's is great and to have this quality of a restaurant inside a theme park, I think is really, really impressive. Um, the food that we've had there, we've eaten there a few times has absolutely been great. We've had some fantastic meals there and great service as well. Um, they just have really solid choices and they have a way of taking something that may sound a bit exotic and making it something that just about everyone will like. And I think that's the mark of a good restaurant. When we talk about food being uh, fancier, as Mike likes to call it, fancier food, um, the whole point of that is to take something that may be unknown or unfamiliar to you and prepare in a way that makes you like it. Um, I think that good quality food is good quality food and it tastes good to everyone, no matter what kind of an yeah. eater you are. So, and I think Disney restaurants do a, a good job with that for the most part. All right. So mine's going to be the last one that I had my last signature restaurant, which is Jico got to eat there for the first time uh, in April and really, really enjoyed it because um, I, I think this is true of many, many of our listeners and it's not a bad thing, but I think it's probably a, a more common thing than we think is that, you know, if you have folks like me, I, I don't eat signature very often because my two kids are picky eaters. You know, my wife and I, we're not fancy eaters. You know, we like barbecue. We, you know, we'll go to the local Mexican joint. You know, we, we just, we just kind of eat normal, you know, not fancy stuff, but I was kind of intimidated by Jico to, to, to tell the truth, you know, because I had been to Boma and I really enjoy Boma. Boma is a solid restaurant because again, it's a buffet and I like that it's like trails in that you, in, in a way, because there's lots of safe options on the, on the buffet that, you know, my kids would be able to find something and have a good meal. But I mean, it's different in trails in and that there is a lot of exotic on the Boma uh, buffet too, to, to really stretch your palate. But I will say, you know, I, I always looked over at Jico, you know, when I stayed at animal kingdom lodge and ate at Boma, I'd kind of look over there and say, Oh, it looks a little fancy, you know, and it's just that, you know, the term signature dining, make a person like me a little nervous, you know, because I'm like I'm thinking, you know, the maitre d is going to come out with, you know, it's like the blues brothers or something, you know, like with a, the towel on his arm and ask me what kind of wine I want. I don't drink wine. I don't know. You know, I'll drink wine, but I don't know what I'm drinking. Just put it in my glass and I'll taste it. You know, I can't pick anything. So, you know, fancy restaurants intimidate me, I'll be honest. But we went into Jico. We had a nice table with lots of friends, great company. But the thing was, is that it was more casual than I was expecting. You know, like I actually wore shorts there. Don't flame me. But I mean, it was their dress shorts and it was mm, a thousand degrees. All right. You know, the nice collared shirt and stuff. And, um, you know, I after about 10 minutes, I wasn't thinking, oh, my gosh, you're in a signature restaurant. Sit up straight. You know, make sure you use the second or third fork. You know, like, I, you know, I get freaked out by that stuff. You know, it was just like order, you know, we shared some appetizers, we shared some drinks, we had a great conversation, we had an awesome table. And then I got the steak with the mac and cheese. And it was just so, so stinking good. And it, you know, it boiled down to, it wasn't a fancy steak, it was just a really, really good steak. And it was really interesting mac and cheese. It was still mac and cheese, but it had like different cheeses, you could tell just a little bit of a different taste to it which i really enjoyed and then the dessert came out and it was like this weird thing it looked like a bird in a nest and i don't know i ate that thing so fast it was so good and you know i was like i turned to jocelyn i was like what's the story of this thing it was like a bird in a nest kind of freaking me out she's like tasted i was like oh my god it tastes like cotton candy wow. <laughs> bird was gone so i the thing was you know and i'll tell this to our listeners you know don't be intimidated by the perception of signature dining like i was and i probably still will be again because i it's hard to have it to break but like once i went into Jico like that, that glass wall had been shattered, you know, like I was scared. I was kind of intimidated when I peeked in from the outside, but once I went in and had a meal, it's like, it's, you know, we're just having a nice meal. All it is really nice food and really, really cool decor stuff like that. Pam, I, you were there that night. So, I mean, do you kind of see where I'm coming from? And I, I bet you more of our listeners have this than you might think. I do. And you know, um, one of the things I always tell people is if you're eating at a good restaurant and they're not the staff and the service is not there making you feel comfortable, helping you with any questions you have on the menu or helping guide you through the process, then they're not doing their job. That's the whole point is everyone should be comfortable at a really good restaurant. If you're there and you're going to pay the bill, then that staff should be making you feel like you belong. So don't let that stop you. The restaurants at Walt Disney World are absolutely fantastic at making all the, you know, making all these restaurants places that anyone can feel comfortable dining in. So don't let them stop you. I, I think the thing too, real quick about signature dining, and then we'll move on to the snacks and kind of wrap this up. It, Walt Disney World is, you're going to see a lot of folks that are just, you know, typical people walking into a signature dining, especially with the Disney dining plan, because a lot of folks are using their credits that way to, to take advantage of signature dining, especially folks that have deluxe. Um, 
you know, cause like we have, we have a lot of real fancy restaurants. Like we have a famous one downtown. Ricky probably knows it's called Tony's, you know, it's like, it's like the fancy restaurant in downtown St. Louis. I've never been there because I picture it just being like ball players and, you know, like lawyers and executives. And I don't even know if they'd let me in, you know, but at Walt Disney World, everybody's welcome. You know, it's kind of like, you know, you're going to see other dads there with their kids. Well, maybe not their kids, but, you know, dads that are worn out by their kids on a Disney vacation. <laughs> just like, I, I feel like the playing field's probably a little more even at, at a Walt Disney World signature dining than a fancy, you know, back home restaurant. So that's what I say. All right, here's the hard one, man. There's snacks everywhere at Walt Disney World. I mean, everywhere. Like, okay, you're going to the electric chair. You get one snack. <laughs> Ricky, you- Why does he keep bringing that up? Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> um, let's just avoid that topic. Um, if I was going to Epcot right now and wanted to have a snack, I can tell you that the thing that I would choose is the – a uh, red velvet whoopie pie that is found at Sunshine Seasons because, oh my gosh, it is amazing. It is seriously so good. It is definitely something that, I mean, you can share, but I wouldn't because I'm selfish. Um, So <laughs> it's, it's two very thick uh, pieces of like red velvet cake and then it has a uh, mickey mouse uh chocolate piece on top um with stuck with icing and then in the middle is a giant glob of icing and it's like the buttercream delicious icing the kind that gets the sugar granules in your teeth oh it's so good i just like <laughs> Yes, if you are looking for that sugar high, this is where it's at. The red velvet whoopie pie. And it's coated with uh, the the icing part is coated with little mini chocolate chips. So, yes, I hadn't had this until very, very recently. And I thought to myself, Ricky, you are so dumb. Why have you not gotten this before? Because it's so fantastic. So they have this daily at Sunshine Seasons, right? Yes, it is daily. So how, how much is this item? Like five, six bucks? Oh, I didn't look at I didn't look at the price. I was just like, here you go. <laughs> Take my money, please. Uh, it was it was somewhere around five five fifty, somewhere around there. So I think that's about what it was. But it was so worth it, and I would do it again. Absolutely. It, it's one of those treats that it's one of those treats that would come home with me, and I would find a way to put it in my bag. So. <laughs> That's not saying much, people. Let me just tell you. <laughs> a lot of things home in her bag, but that is one of the things that would come home with me for sure. <laughs> All right. So, Pam, what is your go-to? This is your last snack you're ever going to have on Earth from Walt Disney World. What do you get? What are you having? So, I'm kind of a simple girl when it comes to snacks, and I could, I'm going to pick something a little more exotic, but I could have just as easily gone with the popcorn <laughs> yes. at Disney. It just is better at Walt Disney World. It's salty and buttery and I don't know. There's something you always have a great view, right? We have a maple one that's at the Canada Pavilion and it's really good too. I'm just letting you know. So that sounds good too. (laughs) And also the pretzel. I love the Mickey shaped pretzel and I'm a hot pretzel kind of gal. I I just like there's just something good and simple about a good hot pretzel um they aren't like the auntie ann's kind that are kind of sweet they're like a plain old like hot sam's pretzel almost i I know right so um but i what i really do like and i do like this is the nutella waffle at sleepy hollow it has berries and bananas and waffle and nutella Yes. And I think the fact that you have it with those fruits that do have a little bit of um, tanginess to them makes the Nutella something that I can really enjoy. Because I, I often think Nutella is a little too sweet and like mm-hmm. overpowering. But having it with the fruits there and the waffle and everything else, love that. My family and I, we split one of those probably most trips. I mean, it's just good. And I it's think it's big. worth it. It is. It's really big. Um and it's just worth going there to experience. It really is tasty. And it has fruit. So, like, that's healthy, healthy. right? Absolutely. Like yes. A salad. Yes. It's, it's, a, it's a fruit salad. Yes. <laughs> it's a fruit salad. That's what I heard anyway. <laughs> so. I like so it. What I'll say is, and I'm going to go a savory and a sweet, you know, because I think you, you got one of, you know, you're all, you got, you know, you have different moods. That's and true. Is, yeah. Is, um. Man, the way I judge this is it's something that I'll have multiple times in like a right. vacation. You know, I'll have more than one of these 
every trip if I'm there for like more than a weekend. So my savory one, again, same place Pam said, it's the it's the uh, spicy or sweet and spicy chicken waffle over yeah. at uh, Sleepy Hollow. Love that thing. I have it all, often, more often than I should. I mean, it's just chicken and waffles is like now a very commonplace thing. You know, when they first came out with it, it wasn't unless it was like in the South. That was kind of a thing, but it's it's just so good because it, it gives you both in that in that snack itself, you get sweet and savory. You get the chicken breast and you get the sweet sauce and stuff like that. So very good. And it's a great bargain. It's like five or six bucks. And I mean, it fills you up too. I mean, you could, it's almost like a meal substitute, like a small meal substitute. Um, but my one, I will say, oh man, we got people in the chat. Alan's coming with the crow nut. I haven't had that yet. I still got, maybe I'll have it this summer. Yeah. So my go-to, I'm going to go with my one snack if I'm looking for a sweet. Main Street USA, the ice cream parlor, it's the All-American Sunday. I gotta have oh, it. Oh, yes. It's yes. The, yes. No way Jose basically is what it is. And uh Hannah the other day posted a picture on Instagram of the All-American uh, Sunday, like with portrait mode or something. She spiced it all up and I was like, Killer. Killer. Like, My phone. It's so good. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things like it, it, not only is it a great dessert, and it's and it's very simple. I mean, it's just basically like you know, vanilla ice cream, chocolate sauce, caramel, nuts, whipped cream. No, it's it's not caramel. It's peanut butter. Peanut That's butter. All, yeah, you put chocolate butter. and peanut butter together. Oh, it's the oh, best. It's my favorite thing in the world. Thing. Yes. But you know, like, it's one of those things though. It's it's a great like it would be a great thing to have tonight here in St. Louis. But the thing is. Eating it on Main Street USA, like while you're just strolling the park, especially on a night, say, say like you're like on a Tuesday night in the middle of the summer, just walking magic <laughs> at like 10 o'clock at night. Like that is the thing me. to hold in your hand saying, how good is life right yep. now? You know, like <laughs> it's 10 o'clock on a Tuesday night, I'm walking around the magic kingdom, eating this big old ice cream. I mean, that is like just the, that, that's like when you got to just take stock of how li- good your life is at that point, you know, cause yep. You got to do that sometimes, but it is, it's solid. So that's what I say. So mic drop. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So how, Ricky, did we do okay? Snacks, meals? I mean, I think we did okay. I mean, it's, if we're going to the electric chair, we're going good. You know, we're, we're doing it right. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. What's wrong with you, to it's be perfectly funny. honest. <laughs> Dennis is in here and he says he's hungry. So, so am I. So it's time. To- I'm hungry too. Wow. It's time to eat. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today's show. Go get you something real to eat right now. But don't forget today's episode brought to you by the Magic for Less Travel. 2019 packages are out. So drop by the magicforless.com for the details. Great booking bonuses. You're in that sweet spot right now. So get that quote in today. You'll get that uh, information. You put down $200 deposit. Secure that reservation for 2019. Again, the deposit's fully refundable until 31 days prior to check-in. So really, you're not locked in, but you have your room. That's the most important thing. Remember, the rooms are the things that are scarce with Walt Disney World. Once those are gone, they're gone. You can always add a dining plan. They always have tickets, but you want to get that package secured, locked in, and that way you're not going to be shut out because big things happening in 2019 down at Walt Disney World. Uh, don't forget to use our Amazon affiliate link, beourguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. We appreciate that so much. Follow the show on Instagram and Twitter at be our guest pod and at be our guest Mike. And of course, drop by the Facebook page. We're going to have a conversation this weekend about your favorites, table service, counter service, signature and snacks right there on the page. We'll all get some new ideas for better dining on our next trip. So for Ricky and Pam, I'm Mike wishing you a great weekend. Whatever you do, stay safe. And we'll see you real soon. Oh, Yay! I know, oh, right? That made everyone hungry. Woo! So hungry. Uh, all right. Soa, so soa. Good and get ready for tomorrow. All yes. right. Take a deep breath. Yep. Ah. We'll talk to you guys later. All, all right. right. We'll see y'all. We'll see you guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Watch for us on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Podcast. That's okay. right. What up? We've got that. That's all right. That's all right. I'll do it next week. Okay. See you guys. Bye. Bye.